my friends. I'm going to be doing a ribbon pour today, but first let me show you a few um, embellishments I've done recently. You may have seen them on Facebook or even uh, YouTube Shorts. I'm starting to do a lot of those, which are great fun. Um, this was a pour I had sitting around for a long time, hanging on the wall, in fact, but um, it hadn't sold, so I, I always thought it reminded me of water. So I painted these fish on here and added some bubbles and I'm pleased with it. I'm going to remove it from the frame and apply um, resin to it to really give it some depth. I think it'll it'll look great. It's already sold, but I can make prints if anyone's interested. Next, I've got this little guy. Um, now this is fun. This is the background I'm using for my flower of the month paintings, but I made canvas prints of this background to, to use for those little demos. And um, I decided to paint this stately uh, hair on there. He's also sold, but prints could be made. And lastly, I got this one. Um, this is a ribbon pour I did a while back, and I decided to dress it up with these with these chickadees. And I think they're great fun. It's also sold, but I, I'm thinking of um, cropping it into uh, little pieces and making prints out of those. So that'll be fun to do. Okay. Today I'm using a 10 by 20 inch deep canvas and I'm trying to use up these paints I um, have been using for um, recently for these squiggle pours and this swipe I did the other day with Australian Floetrol. So I've got quite a bit of paint left. So I'm going to put down a black base coat and then do a ribbon pour. I'm going to divide up the cool colors from the warm colors and apply those separately. See what happens. So let me pause for a moment, put down my black base coat, and I shall return. Okay, I'm back. I really didn't need to pause there because I forgot that when I do a ribbon pour, I don't coat the entire canvas with the base coat yet. I like to um, apply the ribbons and then tilt to cover and then maybe apply some skinny ones. So at any rate, that's basically what I'm doing. I'm going to uh, go ahead and do two separate cups, as I said, the warm and then the cool. I'm still going to have paint left. Mm, maybe I'll put two layers in each cup. I noticed on the dried piece that I just showed you, um, some of these colors are transparent. Most of them are opaque. But the orange and the yellow, for sure, are or semi-transparent, anyway. When they overlap another color, you can see through. But the um, majority of them are actually opaque. So let's see. Do I want to do the... I think I'll do this one first, and here we go. Oh man, I got a lot of paint left, but I don't want to add any more because I want to maintain that negative space. Oh well. Maybe one layer is enough. Hmm. 
Okay. I'm gonna have more purple. Um, I have extended these, if I didn't mention that already, with the glue and flow trial mix, and I will detail down below in the description box exactly what my recipe was. There we go. Fun. Okay, let's move this around. Now we'll reach the edges. Look at those sides, aren't they fun? This is so simple, but effective. I think it's a really fun technique. Could I be done? I think I'm done with the composition. I, <clears throat> I think I like that. All right, I'm gonna stop tilting, take my gloves off and decide if I wanna add any more skinny ribbons because I have some in my cup here, in both the cups. Plenty going on already. I'm not going to. I'm going to stop right there. <laughs> Easy peasy, and I like it a lot. Let me bring you in for a closer look. These lines are going to stay. It's going to dry just like this. Those lines are pretty much going to stay put. Look how cool the sides look. I like it. I hope you do too. Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, my friends. See you next time.